a wealthy parishioner who had never given any money to support his parish was approached by the chairperson of the stewardship committee for help with extensive repairs to the roof. Sir, he said, our records indicate that you're a millionaire but have never helped your parish. We really need a new roof. Can you help us out? The man replied, obviously your records make no note of my dying 95-year-old mother and her large medical expenses, or my blind unemployed brother, or my poor sister who was abandoned by her husband and left with six children to feed. I am so sorry. I had no idea, the chairperson said. The rich man replied, so if I don't give any money to them, why would I give you anything? <laughs> Our first reading today comes from the first book of Kings. We encounter one of the towering figures of the Old Testament, one of the first classical prophets, the prophet Elijah. We learn of Elijah's prophecy of a drought in Gilead in Israel. The Lord directed him to travel east to Zarephath, where he would encounter a widow. This widow had been suffering the effects of the drought and in her mind was going to prepare one last meal for herself and her son with what little oil and flour she still had left. And then she entire, intended to die of starvation. Elijah tells her to bring him some bread and water. He tells her to not be For the Lord God says, the jar of flour nor the oil will run out until the rains come again. This comes true, and the widow and her son are able to live through the drought. The widow's trust in our first reading today is reflected in the offering of another widow in our gospel story. We first hear of Jesus teaching in the temple and warning the crowds of the actions of the scribes who are using their authority to gain honor and prestige by taking unfair advantage of the widows. These actions will lead to severe condemnation, Jesus says. Now there was a widow who came in and put two small coins in the temple treasury. Upon seeing this, Jesus gathered his disciples together and remarked, Amen, I say to you, this poor woman put in more than all the other contributors to the treasury, for they contributed from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has contributed all she had, her whole livelihood. No doubt, the widow's commitment to the treasury exemplifies discipleship, what might be called sacrificial giving. Any sacrificial gift is connected intimately with the Eucharist we celebrate here each week. The offertory collection is not just a convenient way to collect money, but it's a sp specific concrete gift of ourselves, the time we invest in work, the talents that make that work possible and fruitful, the talents that make it a source of satisfaction and support for ourselves and our families, a fulfilling of the biblical mandate to return to the Lord a tithe, the first fruits of our work, our treasure. It is a gift of thanksgiving joined to the offering of the Eucharist and dedicated to the work of the church and the building up of the church. What would it mean to you to make a lifestyle change in order to give sacrificially, 
to develop a culture of generosity. But the Bible tells us the way we manage our resources reflects the priorities found in our hearts. Where your heart is, there's your treasure also. Now, parishioners often look at the bulletin and see a negative number in the budget area. Whenever a pastor like me talks about money, it's often about how much the church is financially struggling. But I think that's the wrong way to look at things. You see, it's really a matter of mission. If we come up financially short, it's not only about the money shortfall, but also about the mission shortfall. Less money, less actions to carry out our mission. Mission motivates. God has called Holy Rosary Parish to do great things for God's kingdom. And I quote, to proclaim the good news of salvation, to educate in our Catholic faith, to invite others to know the Lord Jesus Christ and adopt a life of discipleship for his glory. End of quotation. You see this every week in the bulletin, page 11. We need funds to support the varied ministries we talked about last month in the stewardship of ministry part of our endeavor that helps us meet our mission. You see, your generosity makes a difference. Maybe you're reluctant to give because you wonder whether the parish can be trusted to manage the money well. People just don't give to organizations whose financial management can't be trusted. I'm here to tell you Holy Rosary stewardship can be trusted. We have tried for greater transparency by providing more financial information in the weekly bulletin. Financial information over time was in the envelope all parishioners received prior to this part of the stewardship initiative. A highly qualified person has been hired to be director of stewardship slash development director so we can coordinate activities of the parish and the school. The parish is audited by the diocese. <clears throat> Financial accountability measures are indeed in place. There are countless stories of men and women who struggle with the idea of generosity. Why give? I can't afford to, we often hear. But in the end, in faith, they obey God. In a totally unexpected way, God transforms their hearts and minds. A story. Holy Angels Parish, Dyersburg, Tennessee. We were about to raise money to buy and demolish houses located around the church complex. One of the parishioners came to me and said he would commit money to the initiative. He told me a story about how they raised money years before for the church hall slant kitchen that required more money than the current endeavor we were undertaking. He said that when the earlier campaign started, he sat down and talked to his wife and decided that they couldn't afford to give anything. But the more he thought and prayed, the more he realized that he couldn't afford not to give since this was his parish. He committed the funds. Guess what? Soon after, he got a letter in the mail that said some relative of his had died and he would be receiving some money in the near future, which turned out to be more than he had committed to the project. You see, when people align their life and money with God's design, they often find themselves on, the, on an adventure they never could have imagined. Why would that Dyersburg parishioner and so many others be reluctant to give? Maybe 
because he was part of a world of anxiety that is rooted in scarcity, not having enough, not having done enough, not having been enough, not measuring up, not being safe or valued or esteemed. A mindset rooted in anxiety and scarcity can evoke a sense of greed. It can lead one to the notion of having to be self-sufficient, the need to make it on one's own. A theme running through the book of Psalms contradicts a world of greed by presenting a counter world of abundance that leads to generosity. When God's creatures practice justice and generosity, God's earth responds with new gifts. The anxiety that leads to greed is undone by abundance that leads to grateful generosity. There are many psalms that show this, like Psalm 145 and its companion Psalm 146, from which our responsorial psalm is taken. When creation is recognized as a gift that keeps on giving, we need not covet what is on the plate of our neighbor. We need not hoard. We need not acquire a surplus because we may run out. Because this is the God who gives far more abundantly than we can ask or imagine. Think of my Dyersburg parishioner. The Psalms invite us to trust and so move away from anxiety about scarcity precisely because this is a God of abundance who gives freely and without limit. The God who gives far more abundantly than we can ask or imagine. And we need to be like him. Scripture reveals that generosity is not exclusively about money. We ought to be generous with all resources God has given us, time and talent as well. God designed us to be a means through which his generosity flows. What would happen if the people of Holy Rosary perish align with God's design for them in terms of their time, talent, and treasure. What would happen if Holy Rosary parishioners had a generosity first mentality? And what if it all starts with you? We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. Winston Churchill. Again, just like last week, we're asking you to commit to the stewardship of finance. You should have gotten information like this and this in the mail. Now, if you don't turn it in today, bring it next week. That basket will still be there. Drop it by the uh, office. Put it in, if you go to a mass, you don't want to bring it up, put it into the offertory collection when it comes around, whatever way, shape, or form over the next few weeks. We look forward to hearing from you. And as always, we thank you for your generosity to your parish.